I do know people who eat dogs. Okay, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Hell cut. <laughs> And yellow channel i'm v and i'm markel and today we are talking about the top five stereotypes of asian people yeah. so what's the first one boy this one especially among this whole corona madness has popped up again but it's always been here for years and it is all asians eat cat and dog now guys we've all seen the memes or whatever of you know the cats going missing or the dogs going missing and you blame the Chinese neighbor or whatever it may be but um I don't know guys like obviously it is something that happens right mm. like it is something that happens so it's not being denied but in your view because see this one's a bit hard for me because I'm, I'm not necessarily in the Asian culture like that or I'm not in their household mm. so V would you say that the majority of households that you know are eat it or are open to eating it? Um, for me personally, mm. I'm gonna get so much stick for this, but I do know people who eat dogs. Okay, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And they really enjoy it as well. <laughs> Not only one thing, nah. Not only is my girl saying they eat it, she's saying they enjoy it no, as well. So you have to flame this up the thing like that. Because I'm going to get so much stick. I'm the stick, but, man. If it's um, true, it's true, but, man, isn't it? But people need to be aware where it originated from. Okay. So basically, in um, Japan and Korea, after the World War, they had that great, great, great depression where mm. there were hardly any food, hardly basically anything for them to eat. So that's mm. why they had to resort to eating cats and dogs in order to mm. survive so it's basically a survival mode um tactic that's where it originated from right? and then it got built into the culture but then of course it got built into the culture and i'm not saying that everywhere in the asian mm. countries eat it there could be only some regions in vietnam that even eats it it's not everywhere in vietnam either or everywhere in china everywhere in japan yeah do you know what i mean like they're they're is a specific region in each country that would eat that however over time it is now being frowned upon because of course people see cats and dogs as pets the domestic animals yeah yeah so then mm. um they are now frowned upon and yeah so it has died down over the years but yeah. when i was grew growing up and when i was in vietnam i did see people eat it I didn't eat it, so don't come at me, please. Well, I <laughs> don't, don't know. come at me, but yeah. Fair enough. So what about the cat? Is that true then? Or is it just the dog personally, that you've seen? Personally, for me, it's just the dog mm. that I've seen people in my country eat. That I've never seen, cat. seen cats mm. being prepared or eaten or being spoken about. Do you know what I mean? I heard that. And usually, when, in my country, when they'll eat it, it's... Mm. Um, when um, you know, like a group of male who mm. sits around and have like you know drinks and stuff, and then just barbecue yeah, up or something. Yeah, and then they'll just have that there, and um, yeah, that's how that's what it's to be. It's Fair like. enough. So you're you're saying that it's not everybody, but you've come across many Oriental family um, or Asian families, should I say, that haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, eaten yeah, it. especially and in this day and age as well. I don't know anyone who still eats it because it is mm. now being seen as like, oh no, that's the dog from my home and do you know what I mean? All okay, yeah. Dogs and stuff. So now I don't see it as much, but like I said, when I was growing up in Vietnam, I did see it and I did hear people talk yeah. about it. So I can't refute it, but at the same time. Well, that's it, guys. I guess that one we just take away where it's like, yeah, there are people that yam it. There are people that barbecue yeah. the dog. There so are people know that... The, know the origin of it before okay, you yeah. judge people too much like 100%. in, like in um, australia people eat kangaroo but mm. the reason why it's not being too frowned upon is because they're not domesticated animals do you know yeah. what i mean but i'm sure where it originated from them eating kangaroo is because there were lack of food or lack of meat or well, that's what was available at the time right yeah right. so and 
maybe that's what was available in Asia at that time. That's why. Well, it was the Great Depression. If probably farms were destroyed, right. um, stuff like that. So obviously, the limit food was limited. You didn't have cattle because obviously, you guys, you know that farm. A part of a, a successful farm is to have live livestock mm -hmm. and stuff like that, cattle and sheep and stuff. But obviously, if the economy is completely destroyed, the land is ruined, um, then you know there's not going to be a lot of people with cattle and this to sell in the market. So it's kind of like shit, you know. Um, Come here, boy. Come here. No, babe, don't do no, that. No, I'm just saying that's what it might have ended up having to be. It's like, damn, my kids are hungry. Come here, boy. Come here. And then, boy. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say, guys? But we'll move on. We'll move on. So yeah. some do, guys. Some don't. I guess it's like everything, in it? It's not black and white. Um, two. So the second top stereotype of Asians mm -hmm. are that we are geeky and we're good at maths. Boy. Well, I mean, I listen, guys. When I was in school, yeah, there was one Asian brother. I'm not even gonna say his name, in it. I'm not even gonna flame him up like that on 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 the video. But this guy wasn't good at nothing. English, maths. This guy was just. And the thing is, he didn't bump class or nothing. He was just. He was just. I don't even want to use the term dumb. He just weren't made for that. He's not academic. Yeah, like he was just there and he just wouldn't engage. He was just like, you look literally like a doll. He was just like, ah. <laughs> and it was like, it was crazy. Like, yeah. so then from then I knew that that weren't true. Because I used to believe that and I've come across various other um, Asian people in my lifetime and they're just normal. They're just like me. Some were smart, mm -hmm. some weren't. Some were successful, some weren't. Mm -hmm. Some was into crime and gangs, some weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for me personally, um, mm. well, I like I, I I know people who are good at maths who mm. are, I know people who aren't. I know people who are socially awkward and some who aren't. Do you know what I mean? It, like like with everything, it depends on the individual um, themselves. And um, with the good at maths thing, I think where that stems from is mm -hmm. because in our family, math is being drive drove into our head like that's the most important thing that you mm. need to be good at if you're good at math you're going to be rich in the future if you're good at math you're going to get mm. all the good job if you're good at math you're going to be a doctor an engineer um a lawyer all, all of that right mm. so because of that my family or, or the asian family will more push you towards math so mm. you're basically naturally spending more time focusing on math the math yeah. side or the logical side of everything so then because of that naturally if you spend more time focusing on this specific topic you're mm. going to be better at it than every other topic even if you're naturally not good at it yeah you get where i'm coming from so i think that's where it's from that we're, we're just being driven from young do maths focus on maths focus on maths like if you come home and like my sister she's amazing at english um and she'll come home and she'll she'll tell my parents that yeah she got a hundred percent in English. They don't care. They'll ask, mm. okay, what did you get in maths? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that's the extent of That's like a top priority, yeah. yeah. So that's probably why. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah guys, I mean, do you guys know any Asian are you Asian yourself? Do you have Asian friends? Mm. Are you dating an Asian? Are they good at maths? Are they like a human calculator walking around? <laughs> Sometimes we does scare me though. I can't lie guys, I need to add that in. There's times where we've been in a store and we're adding out one and two and three things. You know what I'm trying to say? And then all of a sudden, black, she just has the price. I'm thinking, what? And sometimes guys, it ain't even numbers, you know? It will be like 47 pounds, 50 pence, add 33 pounds, 90 pence, add 21 pounds, and boom, she just got it. I'm just like, rah. Sometimes I'm not gonna lie, it's hard for me not to believe, but if it wasn't for my life experiences, then boy, I'll, I'll probably be on the other side saying it's true. But um, next one, guys, is um, all Asians are bad at driving. Uh, what do you what would you say about that, V? I mean, like I told you before this video, guys, I have I have heard of it before, but I haven't really got too much experience with it. To be honest with you, I can't really remember seeing Asians drive. That's actually the real issue. Hold on, hold on. Don't you have, no. that, don't you have that Asian man at your workplace and he's been back to um, Asia and he's 
the test. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true, guys. One time I was in training school, yeah, I had an accent at work, innit? And um, I had to go back to training school, and there was a gentleman, like an Asian gentleman, he's been back bare times. <laughs> For all of you that don't know, like obviously I, I'm a bus driver, for, the, for those of you that don't know, you're probably going to guess from obviously talking about driving and training in school. Um, and guys, this guy yeah, has been like so much time, even to the point here guys, where like, basically what it was here is that we're all sitting on a bus, innit? And we're with the instructor and basically he's just sharpening us up, right? And it'll be like the Asian guy's turn to drive guys and this guy was doing stupidness. <laughs> like I'm talking guys like I'm thinking how did this guy pass his blood clot test? How did he no have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen someone driving? I'm like, no, nah, like there's no way guys, I'm, on the road. Yeah, like guys, I'm sitting there like this, like this. Cause I'm looking at the situation like nah. <laughs> like this brother's actually on the road. Like, guys, he's going around corners mad wide. He's driving in the middle of the road, <laughs> like other cars having to force to move over. The guy's grabbing his wheel, you know, telling him, yeah, like, line back up. The guy is going back. <laughs> like, bare madness. But what about you? Like, um, are your family good drivers? Are you a good driver? From my own... Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> from my own experience, that, and this is my own experience, so don't mm. come for me, right? It is true. <laughs> like, I'm so, oh, bad. Wow. I'm so bad at driving. Mm. My dad's bad at driving. My sister actually is good at driving, but she drives automatic cars, so that doesn't count. <laughs> but at most cars, you're basically saying in America that no one can judge, because they all drive automatics out there, basically. No, but yeah, but she's bad at directions as well, so yeah, essentially. Mm. Yeah, we're all bad at driving. No, but okay, yeah, that's your household. That, yeah, from the household, from my household, we are, so it might be genetic. Um, but what about like cousins or friends or friends of the family that when I mean, you sat in people's cars? I mean, they seem okay. I mean, it's just, it gets me from A to B. But you do I see where the stereotype know. comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, I see where it comes from. You know what I think it is, yeah? Is that, um, and this is kind of linking to the next one, no, or the last one, should I say, yeah? yeah. But, I, but I'm just saying it so you guys remember, right? Is that what we have to remember, yeah, is that. A Asians haven't been like in the Western nations for as long as some of the other cultures. So, whereas like we've had time to like adapt to certain things and rules, right? A lot of them are like you're like a second generation, right? And you don't really get. I'm not a second generation. I was born in Vietnam, you're so I'm still first generation. Okay, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like people of your age group, roughly, that are, Asian, yeah. are like second generation, right? Or no, they're first. No, they're we're first, first generation. Yeah, you're, first, you're the first one to born here. Yeah, you're first generation. Meaning that a lot of the Asian parents that we see, they haven't even got grandchildren mm -hmm. that are born here. A lot of the times it's just parents' children. That's all you got. Right? So they're taking a lot of their habits mm -hmm. from back home and bringing it here. So whereas like the blacks have adapted. The, um, the Indians have adapted mm -hmm. and all these other various groups that the South Americans have adapted mm -hmm. is that they're still kind of on catch up. Mm -hmm. So everyone looks at them like, why the fuck are you driving like that? Yeah. But it's like, they don't know that in their country, like what you said, there's not really it's mad many, rules yeah. like that. Well, I'm not going to talk for all of Asia for someone from some like country or whatever, from Beijing or something. So, oh no, we got Chinese, we got this, we got that. But I mean... You know, we all know guys back home, even in the Caribbean, driving ain't as organised as it is in Western nations. Let's just be bloody real. Yeah, um, I remember um, when we first came over here, I came over here when I was seven mm. um, and I came over with my dad and he's obviously, he was a taxi driver in Vietnam, right? So he knew, he knows how to drive, drive yeah. and everything. So he's thinking, I'm just going to apply that and come over here mm. and it's fine. In Vietnam, literally, you can run red lights, um, you can just take mm. the pits. So, um, and you beat at every other second. Literally. But you remember when we went to Jamaica on my sister's wedding, it was yeah, like that. Like, to let people know that you're coming mm. through, like, beep, 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 right? Whereas over here, you only beat if it's very, very, very necessary. So mm. when he first came over and he was beeping the whole road down, Everyone was staring at us like, what on earth? Like, my mum had to tell him, like, stop. Like, yeah, we don't do that over here. It's not like that over here, you know? 
But see that, yeah. yeah, that just links in, guys. So I mean, that sh that kind of shines some light on maybe why that stereotype has. And to be honest, I think it links to number four, which is um, we believe all Asians are Chinese. Yeah, we're from China, and that's that's mm. all that there is. <laughs> now, guys, I've been guilty of this, and I'm actually with an Asian girl, so. I can see why sometimes people do slip up with this because obviously one of the major Asian nations that we do hear of and see is China. They're like they're like the America of the Asian countries, basically. Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, every, every time we hear something that is Asian related, it's usually China, 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 China. So naturally, let's say I get into an argument with V. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling my friend, and they're like, what, what, what was she? I say, she's Chinese. You know what I'm trying to say? Though, mm. Riz. I'm not saying it's right, mm. but I can see how it does happen. Because you don't hear about Cambodia. Yeah. You don't hear about Vietnam. No, but I just think that's just lack of um, respect. Like, 100%. get to know where we're from um, before mm. you assume that there's more than one country in Asia. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're not all from China. Fair enough, yeah. Like, have, take out some time. It doesn't take that much of an effort to understand or to acknowledge where we're from. So, sometimes I'll talk to people and they'll ask me, oh, um, so when are you going back to China? Mm. In, in terms of, like, my holiday. Like, when am I taking my holiday to go back to China? And yeah, I, that's had to, that's I had rude. to, I had to yeah. stop and I had to tell them, first of all, I'm from Vietnam, so next time, ask me where I'm from first before you assume that I'm from China. Do you know what I mean? Because it is very, very rude. I can tell he's exactly. passionate about this one, guys. No, I'm it's, feeling it's, the energy it's, from no, here. That's why I don't even want to say Chinese no more. I might no, get it. It's actually disrespectful. Mm. Like, you don't have enough respect to actually take out your time to learn to, yeah. to actually ask oh where are you from it's a simple question mm. you don't need to naturally assume that i'm from china do you know what i mean 100 percent. and guys see this is actually the negative side of stereotypes is that sometimes a lot of the time should i say actually you actually end up offending people yeah because everybody are everybody's individuals and once you naturally presume you know something about somebody without take, having the respect to ask them it's, it's very rude and it's very offensive. So on that point but, of view, I, I do I do get what you're saying. But yeah. this is just not only just um from like me receiving it from like other races. Mm. Like, I've received it from a Chinese person before. I lived in China for a year as part of my university degree. That whole year, imagine being mm. Asian, and I can't speak Chinese obviously because I'm Vietnamese, and then going to the market and um, I've got a white friend next to me who speaks fluent Chinese and she's standing there um, translating for me and basically the person in the market was standing there arguing with me um, that I am Chinese, I look Chinese so I must be Chinese Crazy. Um, I am way too dumb, um, that's wow. why I do not understand Chinese and then I've got, uh, because there's a little a, a little child that was next to her, he was running around me like, you're stupid, you're stupid, you can't speak Chinese, oh, you're Chinese and you can't speak Chinese. It's like, really? <laughs> it's like, really? That That's why it gets me angry because mm. it's just like, even like Chinese people think that only Chinese people exist but, but, but see, world. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> but you see, what the, the point I made on when this first question first opened up when I said that, Sometimes all people are exposed to is Chinese, Chinese, Chinese. That just shows that even the Chinese people see themselves as an Asian powerhouse. Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that that woman mm -hmm. knew China. It wasn't just China that existed. I'm pretty sure I don't know, she must have met a, a Thai there. or a Japanese. No. So even Japanese, she must have known like Japanese. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm trying to say? But they must. They might think like, oh, but we all speak Chinese. Because oh, I don't understand yeah. how. Like she's standing there, literally. Instead of telling me what the price of the product is, she's standing there arguing with me. Because, because what you gotta realize though, V, yeah, is that this is what I realized yeah, is that from the looks of it, if it isn't J China and Japan, pretty much control all the media influence that leaves Asia, right? So, 
in her mind, she like you said, she probably doesn't hear nothing about all the yeah. other Asian countries. So she's seeing it as China. We're the shit. Yeah. Everyone talks Chinese. We we pull all the power moves around here. So we're the I, only important. Ones. We're the only so important everyone ones. Speaks our language. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, it's it's us. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, and guys, and I hope you take from this that it's important to always seek knowledge, mm-hmm. and it's important to always learn. Even if you only learn a little bit each day or each week, always try to know more than the previous week or the previous month or the previous year. Because when you don't, you end up getting yourselves into these silly situations where you say dumb things and jump to conclusions that are not necessarily true. And as you saw, these passion. Not passion. No, 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 no. no, I respect it though. Because as a a black person, um, I hate it when people presume things. I hate it when people come to me and go, well, I won. Like, what? It is offensive. So I get her passion. I actually do get it. It's just um, ignorant. I hate ignorance. Ignorance, yeah. Especially ignorance that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Because we're in the age of information. You a simple Google search mm-hmm. can answer so many questions. So it's like, why are you ignorant? Or just ask. Or just ask. Where are you from? Yeah. Sim- as simple, simple as, as that. that. Yeah. No, definitely. Just ask. I won't be offended if you ask me where I'm from. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I would sure as hell be offended if you're assuming I'm from China. 100%. So, but anyway. <laughs> the last one, guys. What's the last one? The last one is that we all have an accent. So I think this links back to the um, bad driving one that I spoke about, guys. Um, I think, obviously, I can talk for the UK. I think Asians have mainly been here, started migrating here, maybe in like the 90s right um i'm not saying there weren't no asians for someone you know thumbs down the video and said well my family's been here from the 70s i'm not saying that i'm saying as a mass movement from about the 90s late 80s 90s to the early 2000s whereas a lot of black and asian communities have been here from as early as the 40s and 50s so a lot of us like for me for example guys um my family we're already on like I think third or fourth generation of Afro-Caribbean. These family at the moment, I think you are just on second generation. Not even as it that, because yeah. I was born in Vietnam. Um, so your sister's only, first? Yeah, so my sister's first and that's it. But then you're, and then, oh yeah, yeah, because a lot of your cousins are also, I'm guessing, born back home as yeah, well. Yeah, so. all of my cousins around my age are from Vietnam as well. It's only cousins that are like 10 years younger than me. That are born here, that are born yeah. Here. Yeah. And I don't know about obviously Asian Americans. I know Asian Americans, you lot's population is a bit more mature mm-hmm. than the UK, I think. Um, because I remember watching like documentaries from the Vietnam War and stuff like that, and they were already talking about massive Asian communities that already existed. Also, during the World War as well, um, there was a lot of mistreatment of Japanese Americans. Um, so I know in America it is a different flex. Mm-hmm. So you lot might not obviously understand the point I'm about to make, but because of because they haven't been here for so long, naturally a lot of them do have accents. Mm-hmm. So I think I've seen it, guys, where I've been with you, and we would say something, and it's like the person's like, oh, oh. yeah, like, like shocked because like she talks normal. Like, yeah. Wow, what's your experience on yeah, that? Yeah, but like even like. Um, like you said when Mm -hmm. um we go back to the black stereotype if you haven't seen it watch it Um, yeah yeah, black stereotype where it's like um you're aggressive and argumentative for us for me Mm -hmm. it's like that with the accent thing it's like when i when i finish a conversation with someone um they might end it as oh my god um, i can't believe you speak very well like you're you're so um articulate and yeah like you're really like your accent's really good Good. and stuff like were you born here and it's no they don't even ask that if i was born here it's actually presumed yeah yeah that i was born here and it's just like why like so you came into this conversation already have the pre-assumption that i'm not gonna have an articulate conversation with this girl i'm not gonna be able to understand her and because i understood her and was able to hold a full-fledged conversation with her i'm so surprised oh thank god that happened thank god i was talking to her like really and that's what it is and that's yeah and that's what it comes down to guys you know i'm trying to say i even remember no no go on no no it's all right (laughs) 
Don't worry about it, go on. I even remember when I was around 14 years old and um, we, want, we went on this school trip, like sports mm. school trip, and we were all sitting around, um, you know, on the coach getting to the destination, um, just telling, like, um, just talking about, like, oh, I remember when we were younger, like, um, we used to go out and play and stuff instead of, like, you know, being on the iPad, being on, mm. like, watching TV, like, we actually go out and play. Mm. And then it got to my turn, and I was like, yeah, because when I was in Vietnam when I was, when I was young, literally, I will come home, throw my bag down, run out and play, um, just play outside all day. That would be um, what I will do. And I used to love it, and I, I never even like knew what an ipad or a, a tv like i knew what a tv was but i wasn't interested I, i'd rather yeah. go outside and play and then my pe teacher was so shocked that he didn't even listen to the points i was making he was like wait you were in vietnam when you were younger so your parents um ship you back over there to stay for a few years or what and then i was like no i was born in vietnam um, and I only came over here like seven years ago and he's like no no way no you weren't born in Vietnam like sitting there telling me mm. where I was born and it's just like instead of just listening to my conversation to to my points um, and what I have to add into uh, yeah. the conversation you're more worried about oh how good my accent is and that um, I wasn't born in Vietnam because of this accent of mine. Yeah, he had the pre he had the preconceived yeah, idea. And, and that goes to show that even from a teacher standpoint, they still have they're still human and they still have that pre assumption. Yeah. So it's not just that, oh it's it's the um what is it? It's these people who are like uneducated uneducated yeah, that are well, doing it. It's literally yeah. you know. No, hundred percent. 100% and uh, to be honest that, that was a good point you made with the teacher okay it makes you think even if teachers you know um, don't have an understanding or, or are not open-minded to understand the different dynamics and the different family setups that are out there and these are people teaching the young people mm. so naturally when you teach what do you do you project your opinions and experiences mm. onto your students then they will take it and enter the world and have children that they will project mm -hmm. their experiences onto you and this is how stereotypes live on yeah. you know what i'm trying to say um naturally we presume you know because somebody um speaks english they're born here because somebody has an accent they're born back there not mm -hmm. knowing that actually some people come over here young mm -hmm. pick up the language master the language and they can still talk you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. but he naturally presumed that you came from here yeah but it's like no i came from there yeah but, but he, I came... he actually presumed and made that the focal point of the yeah. conversation rather than just presume in his mind and let it go mm. do you know what i mean so yeah. that and that's it guys you know and i think we all do it i mean to end the video guys i want to say that me and v are not saying that we have an open mind mm. we're not saying that we never stereotype people mm. of course we do as humans as humans yeah. yeah there's times when we have preconceived ideas and that are maybe not necessarily true but at the same time, guys, the only thing I want to leave you with is try to check it. Mm -hmm. um, Think it in your mind, but then correct yourself before you actually blurt it, blurt it out, out or, or act, act on it, it in any yeah. way or discriminate against somebody. Try to think, how true is this? And then what I want you to do is think of your people stereotypes, whatever race you may be. Every race has white people have it. Um, Asian people have it, black people have it, South American people, everyone has it. Like I know some people say South American, especially the women are very loud as well mm -hmm. and boisterous. That they're very like, Aah! they're very like, mm -hmm. you know, aggressive. Are you, if you are South American, for example, and a woman, are you aggressive? Maybe not, you know? So um, just challenge your own racism one and then take it back and say, okay, well, if it ain't true about me, then maybe it ain't true about this person. Mm -hmm. And guys, yeah, so, um, make sure you subscribe make sure you comment down below are we missing any stereotypes are you asian do you agree with everything v said was she wrong was she right we always want to hear other people's points of view guys me and v don't know it all but this is black and yellow and we're out <laughs>